All right, so ladies and gentlemen, when we have um, an absolute value inequality, all right, this is going to be solved very similar to an absolute value equation. The most important thing that we discuss with absolute value equations is that you have to isolate the absolute value. You, we cannot do our two cases before we isolate the absolute value. So what I notice is my 2 is being multiplied by the absolute value. So you've got to undo everything that is happening to the absolute value first. So to do that, I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. Now I have absolute value of w plus 6 is less than or equal to 5. Does everybody understand what I did? Because absolute value equations is the same thing. You have to isolate it first. Okay. Then the next thing we talked about is what exactly does absolute value mean, represent, and so forth. Well, remember, the absolute value is the absolute distance from 0. So the absolute value of 3 is 3. Absolute value of negative 3 is equal to, oh, what am I doing? Is equal to 3 as well. So if I have the absolute value of x, all right, what I want you guys to understand is the absolute value of x, there could be two numbers that could be in there, right? We could say, well, let's say x equal, absolute value of x equals 9, all right? What that means is, is it possible for it, x to be negative 9? Is it possible for x to be positive 9? Yeah, so when you have an absolute value, you have to create what we call is two cases. All right, but you can only create two cases once you have solved for your absolute value. Now, here's where kind of notes and taking writing this down is going to become very important. This is not an absolute value equation. This is an absolute value inequality. So when you create your two absolute value inequalities, what you're going to do is you're going to create a compound inequality. So anytime you have a less than or a less than or equal to, you're creating a compound inequality that is an and compound inequality. Whenever you have an absolute value inequality and it's a less or greater than or equal to, you're creating an or compound inequality. And for those of you that have already worked on compound inequalities, Remember, and compound inequalities are where the inequal we're going to look for the intersection, where or is more likely they're going to be pointing in opposite directions. So how do I write this then as a compound inequality and? Um, basically, ladies and gentlemen, remember we have two cases. w plus 6 is less than or equal to 5. And then what I like to do is rather than trying to rewrite it actually as like an inequality, which you can do, is remember, we have, we have to take a look at the positive and the negative. So this can be w plus 6 is less than or equal to 5. And so you just write in, and w plus 6 is um, greater than or equal to negative 5. So why did I flip the sign? Well, remember when we're solving inequalities, the only difference between solving an inequality and an equation is when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to flip the sign. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, what I did was I negated this right side. So since I negated the right side, I have to flip the sign. Okay. So basically, you're just rewriting the same equation, one as is, and then the other one, you negate the other side and flip the sign. Now we have to solve just like you would solve, just like you would solve an inequality. Subtract 6 on both sides. w is less than or equal to negative 1. And subtract 6, subtract 6, w is greater than or equal to negative 11. All right, so when we're graphing compound inequalities, again, ladies and gentlemen, the best way that I like to teach or show you how to graph the compound inequalities is we're looking for the intersection. All right, so I'll graph one at a time. w is less than or equal to negative 1. So let's do, let's do 0, it's right here. Um, no, let's do, OK, what am I doing? Let's do 0 right here, 1. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, negative 10, negative 11, negative 12. All right. so. I'm not going to do all the tick marks, but obviously, ladies and gentlemen, you will have like all those graphed in there. So if I want to graph w as less than or equal to negative 1, I put a nice circle at negative 1. Now, can anybody want to raise their hand and tell me, is that going to be a closed or an open circle? Anybody want to raise their hand and close it? It's closed, right? Because that is less than or equal to. 
Now, am I going to shade to left? Are the points to the left less than or equal to, or the point are less than, or the points to the right less than? The left. So therefore, I'm going to shade to the left. Now let's do w is greater than or equal to negative 11. Well, greater than or equal to and less than or equal to is still going to produce a closed point. Now our points to the left, I'm kind of using the same um, intervals. Are points to the left greater than or points to the right greater than negative 11? Right. To the right. So then we graph over here. Now, when we're graphing the intersection, remember, or when we're graphing an and, what's so important about and is we only care about the intersection. So really, guys, you don't need to actually have to graph these two. The reason why I like to graph these two is so I can easily see where do they intersect. And they intersect between the two points. Would you guys agree? So the graph, my final answer, is going to only be this graph right here. That's what the final graph will look like, just the intersect, just where they're both true. And that's how you do that one. Make sense? Kind of? Más o menos? OK. So the largest mistake that I am